Hey everybody, this is Jim, the Tabletop Engineer, and welcome to a new playthrough video. Today, I'm picking up right where I left off with 2D6 Dungeon and Realm. I am in the dungeon, so we're playing the, the dungeon rulebook instead of the realm rulebook. And in the last video, I entered a new room and encountered two enemies, a cultist and a crazed preacher. I will put their cards up on the screen. The cultist has five health, and the crazed preacher has four. I got back up to my full health by finding a blessed cross, which was a huge help. The crazed preacher blocks on primary fours, and the cultist blocks on secondary fours. I use red dice for the secondaries and green dice to indicate primaries. Both of them have plus one shift. Excuse me. And... Since I'm fighting two, I will have to pick which one I'm going to attack, and then they will both attack me. I have two shift. We are starting on combat round number one. I will attack. Let's attack the crazed preacher. He's only up four health. Maybe I can get him gone and then deal with the cultist. So I'm going to attack the crazed preacher. Crazed preacher. I roll a five, a, a two five. With two shift, I cannot turn that into a four two or a six four, so I miss. The cultist will attack me with a 4-2. With one shift, he cannot turn that into a 5-4. He misses. The crazed preacher attacks. 4-5. With one shift, he cannot make that a 4-3. He misses. Turn number two, I will attack the crazed preacher. I rolled a 4-3. Uh, with my two shift, I will turn that to a 4-2. He blocks on primary fours. So... It normally is D6 minus 2, but he subtracts 2, so it's D6 minus 4. 2 minus 4 is no damage. The cultist attacks me. 3, 6. With one shift, he cannot make that a 5, 4. The crazed preacher attacks. 4, 6. With one shift, cannot make that a 4, 3. They miss. Turn number 3. I will attack the... Maybe I want to attack the cultist. Let's go for the cultist. Five, five. With two shift, I can make this a six. We're using one of them. And I can lower this to a four. And that is a hit. He does not, he does block on secondary fours, which is minus one damage. Normally, this is D6 plus two, but he takes off one because he blocks. So it's D6 plus one. Six plus one is seven, and the cultist dies. One, two, three, Whoa! four, five. Does this always roll sixes? No. I was going to say, it's, my, it's been rolling sixes. Nope. Okay, not a fixed die. All right, the cultist dies. I gain plus six XP. The crazed preacher will attack me. Oh, a six six in this game is like a critical hit. It's called a prime attack. They jump forward and somehow latch onto you and are able to perform wild scratch twice. So their attack is called wild scratch. It's D6 minus three, and he's gonna do it twice. So the first one, five minus three is two. I am down to eight health. And the next one, D6 minus three, uh, that is uh, zero damage. All right, so uh, down to eight. I will attack. It is turn number four. We both get a bonus shift die. So he is up to two, and I'm at three. I will attack the crazed preacher. I rolled a three, one. I can change that to a four, two, which again is going to do D6 minus four damage. Two minus four is no damage. He hits me with a six, three. He can make that with two shift. He can make that a four three, which is a wild scratch. D six minus three. Uh, I do block on a primary four. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? I block on primary fours. So if he did a wild scratch, that would do less two damage. He did on the first one. He did two minus one. So I'm actually at nine. I don't know if you followed that, but I forgot to take off the minus one on that first hit he made, which would have only done one point of damage to take me down to nine. But he hits again. I'm blocking on the four, so he does D6 minus four. Five minus four is one, so now I'm down to eight. 
Turn number five, we both get two shift. So I'm at four, he's at three. I rolled a four, five. With, three, with four shift, I can make this a six with two of them and lower this to a four with one of them, which is a heavy slash. It's D6 plus two. He does not block on a primary six. So D6 plus two, where'd my blue die go? D6 plus two. Five plus two is seven and the crazed preacher dies. <laughs> and that gives me plus five XP. So 11 plus 40 is 51. I'm halfway there to level two. All right, let's do the uh, treasure. The cultist says roll on religious pouch table one. Go to page 25. Religious pouch table one, no modifier, so just 2d6. That is a seven. Inside the pouch is a small book, which with writing you cannot read. So I got a small book. And the crazed preacher, same thing, no modifier. That is a nine. Nine is nestled inside the pouch is a potion of constancy. You can carry three, is it five potions or three? Five potions and three, uh, three um, scrolls. So I've got a potion of constancy. And I don't remember what that is. Let's look that up. Up in the front of the book, it has a description of all the magic items. Potion of Constancy is plus one precision and plus one discipline for one dungeon level. It's worth 45 gold. I can sell it for half that. So I could sell it for 22 gold. I'll verify that it's half, but I'm pretty sure it's worth 45 gold. But I think when you go to town, you can sell things for half. So I've got my taxes covered. All right. Um, it is plus one discipline, plus one precision for one level. So I could use it now to raise my precision and my discipline, but I'm not going to do that. All right. Let's see where to. This all goes away. These all go away fighting a lot, I fought a lot of enemies the last few turns or games. All right, these were curtains, so we can continue. Let's go through the, um, let's go through the left curtain. Should have rolled a green and a red. Four, six. Okay, four and a six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Four this way. One, two, three, four. Like that. Okay, how many exits? That is only one exit. Let's, um, let's have that going down because I have this corridor and I figure there'll be some connections down here. So four and uh, no, none this way. This is going to be room number six. Room number six, let's see what it is. Page 43, roll 2d6. That is a 5-3. Five, 5-3 three. Five, three is a holding cell. Man, this dungeon is full of, of pins and holding cells. Part of this room has been sectioned off with wooden bars to create a cell. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to draw a cell here. And it says, roll D6. On a 1-4, to four, there is a prisoner. Roll on ENP1. So one to four, a prisoner. There's a prisoner, ENP1, which was back here on 38, was it? Maybe not. Prisoner, ENP1 is on page 34. I was way off by a few pages. Okay, 34, ENP1, roll on the prisoner. All right, uh, 2D6, that is an eight. Inside a cage here is a wounded man. If you have some material to bandage the injury, he survives and can escape. L1 PR, level one prisoner. Do I have any bandages? Well, I have Malaco leaves, some metal, and a potion of constancy. I don't want to give him my healing potion. Well, maybe I do. 
I'm up to eight. Maybe I give him my healing potion, and then I get to roll an L1 prisoner to see he survives and can escape. L1 PR. <sighs> the right thing to do would be to heal him and let him escape, because I do have an escape if I need it. Let's do it. I'm going to scratch out my healing potion. Scratched it out right there. <laughs> uh, actually, I'll erase it because it's gone. There's no point in scratching out. It is gone. All right. Then I get to roll on L1PR, which I believe is level one prisoner. Level one. No, L. It says L1PR. L1PR. Where is L1PR? Level one prisoner. Where is I don't see it. There's no L1 PR. L1. Level one P PR. Level one prisoner, I guess. That's weird. I don't know. I don't know what I'm supposed to do with that. There's no. <laughs> All right. It says he escapes. Well, when you get up to town, there's a there's a section of the book, the rule book, where if you free to prisoner, so I'm going to put free to prisoner, and when I get to town, if I survive and get back to town, I can roll to see if there's any kind of reward or something. Sometimes, like family members give you gold for saving their dad or something. All right, there is one door to the south. I did not make a note of what that was. Let's see, forty three. Holding pin was 5-3, which is reinforced door. So I need to see if it is locked. Reinforced is locked on a 5 or 6. It is not, so it's unlocked. Let's go through that door. It's a corridor. So it goes 5 in one direction and 1. So I could have it go, oh, look at that, hold on five this way, one down. I could connect it to this door here, which was also unlocked. I like when things work out like that. All right, so so I just came back the way I, I went. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back down here to the entry and go through this last left corridor that's open. And our, it's a short corridor, one, one. It goes over one, and up one. I think that's how you do that. Uh, is there? Is it a dead end? No exits. <laughs> this is a dead end. Come on. Okay. Well, that means I got to go all the way back up here. And there's one locked, one locked, and one open. So let's hope this one is is uh, gives me uh, access to the north. All right. So we we go all the way back up here. Five five. It's a it's a big room. All right. So. It, Unfortunately, I can only there's it's four this way. So here's how I do it. This is 25 squares, five times five. The closest I can get would be four by six. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six. I'll just make it a four by six room. How many exits? Four is two. I'll put one here and I'll put one there. Just like that. Okay. Uh, this is going to be room number seven. Room number seven is a four six. Four six is canteen. Hey, you know the the, the prisoner the, the guard's gotta hang out somewhere. Canteen. Three rough tables, a few chairs, and a stool stand next to a bar. You know, because every dungeon has a bar. Sure it does. Some tables with some chairs. <laughs> the barman yells and attacks. Use the laborer stats. Okay. Laborer. Laborer. I guess everybody's working. Nobody's at the bar. So there is a laborer. Four health. Uh, one shift. And five XP. He blocks on primary twos. 
Okay, blocks on primary twos, which is going to not be anything for me. I don't have any primary two attacks. I'll throw the laborer card up on the screen and my uh, maneuvers. So let's go ahead and attack on turn number, turn number one, four, three. With two shift, I can make that a four, two which does D6 minus two, he doesn't block on it. Six minus two is four, and that kills him. <laughs> that was easy. Roll on pouch table one dash two. Oh man, my allergies are so bad right now. Pouch table two. Pouch table one, pouch table one minus two, excuse me. Pouch table one minus two. Mm. That is a, I'll re-roll that. Six plus three is nine, minus two is seven. A few coins are in the pouch. 46 copper, 12, 18, 20. Wow, 20 copper, okay. Plus 20 copper. And 2d6 silver. Eight silver, I think, uh, I know my, my taxes are paid now. Plus eight silver. Uh, and that is it. Yep. And also it said canteen. Oh, you also face a patron. Roll on L1W minus one. I'm sorry. Well, you know what? I'll let, I, I killed him in one attack. So L1, uh, L1W minus one. L1W. L1W is level one wardens, page 38. I was like, man, there's nobody in this bar. Level one warden at minus one. Two minus one is a thug. Thug. There we go. All right, so now the thug will attack me because remember when you get two enemies, one gets to go. So I beat the laborer. The thug has three health and it blocks on secondary fours. He will attack me, he gets one shift. Uh, two, two, he can turn that to a three, two. I do not block on a primary three. It's a punch, D6 minus three. Six minus three is, th is uh, three, I'm down to five. And, ooh, okay, uh, that's not good. Um, I will punch at him, turn number two. Six, four, that is an exact hit. Okay, whenever you roll on the die a match for the dice set for a maneuver, it's called an exact hit. You not only do the damage, but you get to add your shift. And in this case, my shift is two. So it's gonna be D6 plus four. Now he does block on a secondary four, but if I remember right, when you roll a critical, when you roll a six, I think it ignores interrupts. Let me double check that. Uh, an exact strike. You may add your shift, including fatigue die shift. Creatures cannot do this. The exact strike, okay, hold on. So it, I, it does block. If both dice maximum are performed, in other words, the primary second roll need to match. I'm cheating this without the shift and strike. It does more damage, you add your shift. So, so uh, okay, so I'm glad I checked that. It will not, he will still block for minus one damage. So it's D6 plus two, plus two, minus one, so it's D6 plus three. This die, come on, five, there we go. It killed him anyway, he's done. <laughs> the plus three alone was enough to kill the thug. That die rolls a lot of sixes. It just seems to. No, maybe not, maybe not, maybe I'm just getting lucky. Nope, not rolling sixes. I thought it was jinxed, or a, a, a fixed, or a, what do you call it, a, <laughs> a bad die. All right, uh, I get plus six XP for that. And for the laborer, the laborer gave me plus five XP. So 11, so up to 62. And no treasure for the thug. All right, no treasure for the thug. And I don't believe there was anything else in that room. The canteen, if you survive, hold on. No, no, wooden doors. So these are wood doors. Are they locked? Four is only reinforced, only metal doors. All right, so these are unlocked doors. That's good. Um, let's go, 
Let's go west through this door. That is a four by four room. It's, by the way, I keep forgetting this. I think I did roll doubles with that five by five. When you roll doubles, you roll again and add it. So four, four, seven, seven by 10. Wow. A seven by 10 room. Okay. Seven would go all the way to this wall. One, two, three, four, five. Ooh. So seven times 10 is 70. One, two, three, four, five. Seven times 10 is 70. I could only go five over. Five into 70 is what? 12? No, 14. Five times 14, carry the two, 70. 14. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Wow, that is the biggest room I have ever encountered in this game. How many exits? Three. There better be a lot of exits. So I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to. I'm going to put one going down this way, and I'll put two going this way. There'll be one here, <laughs> and there'll be one here. All right, here's the thing about these big rooms. They have their own chart, and usually it's something pretty dangerous. So let's go to page 40. No, for this, you consult the large rooms. Large rooms, L1, LR, is on page 40. 40. So I'm rolling on a different room now. Page 40, large rooms, 32 squares or bigger. You roll 2d6 and add them. I'm going to roll that since it went off. 12. It is a library. This is room number 8. 8 is a library. Lined with bookshelves, this library is protected by two guards. Of course it is. So I'm just going to draw some bookshelves in here. I'm hoping there'll be some good treasure. All right, bookshelves. Two guards. There are also tables covered in scrolls. All right, tables with scrolls on them. Oh, I love scrolls. Given how big this room is, you hope there'd be a lot of them, but there's not that many, I'm sure. All right. If you survive the encounter, roll on SCT-1, scroll table 1, and scroll table 2. So there are two exits. They are wood doors. Are they unlocked? Five is reinforced only, so these are unlocked. And I'm going to be fighting two guards. So we are almost out of time for this video. So in the next episode, I will take on two guards, which I think I've already taken on a guard. Yep. So I'll be taking on two guards. They have seven health each. I'm down to five health. This, uh, this, could, be, this could be dangerous. All right. Um, that's all I got. This is Jim, the Tabletop Engineer. I'll be back very soon with the next episode and pick up right where I left off. Until then, everybody, take care. Check out the new RPG and Wargame newsletter. Each week the Tabletop Engineer shares news, products, Kickstarters, and much more related to the gaming hobby. It's free to subscribe, so check out the link in the video description below to sign up.